something of an expert on markers. You created one. I didn't make shit. Your government made me. And you destroyed two, which is why we're here. I got a job for you. No. No! I'm done with that. You find somebody else for your suicide mission. We did. Before we lost contact with her. She told us to find you. Ellie. Where is she? What'd you do to her? Where is she? Unitologists have breached the inner concourse. We can't hold them! Captain, run out of time, gotta go! She's out there all alone, Isaac, and I can't help her unless you help me. Welcome back to part two of the Dead Space 3 Impossible Difficulty walkthrough. Now we have just woken up in our, well, our, our apartment building, which Isaac owns, I guess, after leaving Titan Station on in the second Dead Space. And it's, this chapter is now chapter one, we're out of the prologue, and it's called Rude Awakenings, or Rude Awakening. And we meet these two people, we meet Carver and Nolan. Nolan's the dude to our left, and Carver is the Marine to our right. Carver, if you do co op in this game, you will be able to play as Carver. And he basically just gives you his story and more about him because he, he may not seem to you, be a friend at the moment during the game, but later on you will become your friend and you'll need him. And right now, the have uh, just encountered Asgard, who are the marine enemies in this game, which I'm not too sure that the developers made the right choice with putting in enemies that shoot you in the whole cover system. I mean, sure, keep the enemies that shoot you, they're like a nice change of pace, but don't put in the crouch button, that it just makes Dead Space seem more like a Battlefield or Call of Duty game, which I like the series because it's not like that. It's completely different, it's a great game, <laughs> it's an amazing story and I don't want it ruined by having all these cover mechanics and different shooter mechanics, and this game doesn't need to be anything like that to be a good game, it's fine what it is, and <clears throat> at the moment we're just going to run through the streets taking out all the enemies we can and it's important because we're on impossible difficulty that we stay in cover and only pop out to shoot enemies. Well, to shoot the Earth Guard enemies, but you can aim for the head because if you don't aim for the head, they'll take a lot of ammo to kill and they don't die as quickly. If you don't, and if you do aim, well, uh, what am I trying to say? If you aim for the head, they pretty much die in one shot and their head explodes, which is lovely. And you really do just pop out, put two bullets into someone's head, and then. Move on, right here is a bad example of doing that. Um, 
as you can see the ground or well, the terrain slopes down so my aim got stuffed up there and right now you can see it took about 20 bullets to kill him when that wasn't needed and right there just one pop to the head and he's gone that's what I'm talking about was the whole cover mechanics in this guy <laughs> he got chopped up Right there, all you need to do is shoot a stasis in the general direction of the traffic and it'll freeze one of them and cause that big explosion because those cars are not driven by people, they're like robotic cars in, from like a robot or something like that and you know, if you freeze one of them, another one's going to come straight past and hit it and look what happened to the tunnel now. And as we go through, I'm just checking for every little piece of ammo we can get. Um, in this difficulty you really do need it later on during the game and you, you really do need to look around in those areas that aren't like on the set path of where you're meant to go because they do hold some very good loot and items that can be used to craft weapons and upgrades later during the game so always check for that and as we come into this room it's a dredger lobby and it's a very pretty place love all the bodies hanging from the walls He's impaled to a wall. Hmm. Oh, they even killed the receptionist. This isn't just a man hunt. It's systematic slaughter. Oh, you noticed. But why top of the government? Why Earth got Danik blames them for experimenting with the marker. Thinks it's heresy. So you can imagine what they think of you. Have you reached the extraction site yet? I'm almost there. Okay, and during our little scenes like that, I'm going to try not to talk when the dialogue box pops up and all the characters are speaking just so you can get an idea of how the story's going and what's developing and right now I think that comes to the end of the video thanks for watching I'll let you watch the final cutscene and I'll see you in the next part this one's still alive bring him here Isaac Clark, this is the man I was looking for. Now don't waste your energy, you're going to be dead in a matter of minutes. Pick him up. There's something I'd like you to see. There. You see that? That's a marker test lab. They're everywhere at all the major colonies and outposts. What do you want from me? As part of the marker test program, Isaac, you help make them. And today, you of all people get to watch me set them free. No, no. You'll kill everyone. Death is only the beginning, Isaac. Nature must take its course, and I can't allow you or anyone else to stop that. Eyes forward, Isaac. Pay attention. Join the cycle of rebirth.